just a little extension um, that this is not in your textbook yet. It's not in your textbook till chapter five, but I feel like it's helpful if we talk about some of this stuff today before we get into the graph. Um, if you know some of this stuff, all right? And then chapter five, we're going to come back and pick this up again. But there are trig identities, certain ratios that are true. And we should know some of these already because on the calculator part of your test, when you were asked to do cosecant or secant or cotangent, you have to put it in your calculator as like cosecant of an angle. You would put in your calculator one over sine of that angle, right? So this is reciprocal. Well, if that's true, then sine of theta could be written as one over cosecant of theta. Does that make sense to you? Since it's reciprocal and cosecant. And so the fundamental trig identities are basically just all the reciprocal functions that you could take any function and write it as one over its reciprocal function. So cosine is reciprocal of secant. So we could say that cosine is the same as one over secant. And secant is one over cosine. Which means tangent is one over cotangent. And cotangent is one over tangent. What else can we say? Well, we can also write tangent and cotangent another way. Can, uh, can you see that? That's a whole lot, line of people. Um, tangent is um, y over x, right? And y is sine and cosine is x. And so on the, I don't know if we talked about it here a second ago, one of the class we did, on the back of that review worksheet that I gave you, it gave you one, like the sine of this angle is some decimal and the cosine is some decimal, find the tangent. And all you had to do was take the sine divided by the cosine because tangent can be thought of as y over x and y is sine and x. So tangent is opposite over adjacent, it's y over x, it's 1 over cotangent, and it also could be sine over cosine. So if tangent could be thought of as sine over cosine, what do you think cotangent could be thought of? Over, right? So cotangent could be cosine over sine. And eventually we're going to use all this stuff a lot to solve some equations, maybe even do some proofs. I know that sounds like really exciting. Um, but right now, we're just going to use it to see that we can do some of the same kind of problems we've been doing, but maybe a little bit harder, and maybe we don't have to draw a picture every time because we can just use these ratios. Also, there's something called the Pythagorean identities. I'm going to give you these today. I don't really think you're going to use them, but just because I want to show you that there's other ratios that we can put together. Um, and they call them the Pythagorean identities because they can all be proven using the Pythagorean theorem. And I know you all love proof so much that you really are going to care about that proof. I really want to know what I can show you. Uh, but the first one is that if you take the sine of a function and you square it, plus the cosine of a function and you square it, it will always equal 1. So step 1 is we have to know how to write that. If I want to write sine squared, kind of put the 2 up here next to the sine. So that's sine squared theta. And the reason we do that is because we don't want to square theta, we want to square the actual sine value, and we'll talk about that more. But sine squared plus cosine squared at the same angle will always equal 1. So that's a pretty cool identity. Um, sine is y, cosine is x, and the unit circle, the radius is 1. You see where that comes from the Pythagorean theorem? You could say y squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. Eh, that's the Pythagorean theorem. The other ones, the proofs are a little bit harder, but we could say 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared of the same angle. And we can say 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. You don't need to memorize these right now. In Chapter 5, you will, and you'll use them so much in Chapter 5 that you will memorize them. Um, this one we might use every now and again right now, but all right. So I'm going to give you a worksheet today, and and uh, a couple of the questions we're going to use these. But before we do that, I got one more thing to give you. 
it says that co-functions of complementary angles are equal. And that's kind of a, a whole lot of math talk there. Uh, we should know what this means. Maybe you can use this on your test a little bit, right? What does it mean to be complementary angles? Add up to 90 degrees or add up to pi halves? Co-functions are uh, functions that kind of go together. Um, but I think we should jump to this part before we look at this, because people always get confused by this notation here. But the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the cosine of its complement. What would be the complement of 30 degrees? 60 degrees, do you agree with that? If you think about the unit circle, if I look at the ordered pair for pi 6 and the ordered pair for pi for pi thirds, do you agree that the sine of this is the cosine of this? The, the sine of this is the cosine of this? Follow me on that? I always like to use 30 and 60 because we know those, but it's true for any set of complementary angles, which means I don't know what the sine of 10 degrees is, but I do know that the sine of 10 degrees is going to be equal to the cosine of one angle. Because 10 plus 80 equals 90. Follow me on that? So if you have two angles that are complementary, meaning they add up to 90 degrees, or they add up to pi halves in radians, their co-functions will always be the same. So the book always writes it like this. They say, the sine of 90 degrees minus some angle will always equal the cosine of that same angle. And I always say, think about what theta is. If theta was 30 degrees, 90 minus 30 would be 60 degrees. So we know that's true. And sine and cosine are co-functions. They go together. And so the cosine of 90 minus theta will always equal the sine of that angle. All you really need to know is if you see 90 minus theta, <coughs> oh, i got to figure out what cofunction that is, is all you really need to do with that. Tangent and cotangent are cofunctions, which means the tangent of 90 degrees minus theta will equal the cotangent of theta. So the cotangent of 90 degrees minus theta will equal the tangent of theta. And secant and cosecant are cofunctions. So secant of 90 degrees minus theta, cosecant, and cosecant of 90 degrees minus theta equals secant. So if you see something like that on the, the next example or on your homework today, all you got to do is when you see 90 minus theta is figure out what it equals and replace it with that. That's really all we're doing with it. Um, well, it's just the ones that actually end up canceling each other out like that. Like, it's just, it's not that they're reciprocal functions. It's that they're co-functions. So it's a whole different thing than talking about the reciprocal function. Okay? So, look at the, uh, the next example. We've done similar stuff like this, but how we can go a step further now is I can give you some stuff that's maybe simplified a little bit. Um, that's not as simple to go back and draw a triangle with. So it says, use the given function and the trig identities to find the indicated trig function. So they tell me that the secant of theta is 5, and they tell me that the tangent of theta is 2 radical 6. I want you to find cosine, cotangent, sine, and cotangent of 90 minus theta. So look at those four and tell me which one you feel like would be simple to do, that you know what we could do for that. Which one looks the easiest, given what we have? What do you think? Cosine is the reciprocal of secant, right? So cosine seems pretty easy to me. You could even say cosine is 1 over secant. We know secant of theta is 5, so the cosine is 1 fifth. I agree with that. That one wasn't so bad. What about cotangent? Does cotangent seem so bad to do? Because why? If I have tangent, can I do cotangent? Yeah. Cotangent is 1 over tangent, which would just be 1 over 2 radical 6. We don't leave radicals in the bottom of our fractions, though, right? So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by radical 6. 
So I would get radical 6 over 2 times 6, which is 12. So I cancel that 6 out with that 12 and make that radical 1 over 2. No, 1's in a radical, 1's not. Just trying to make sure we know our algebra. Okay. In second hour, Aaron picked number 3 as the easiest one, and I was really shocked because most people stay away from number 3 because look, it looks scary because it has that 90 minus theta. But really, number 3 is pretty easy. Look at what we just wrote out on the page before. What did we say the cotangent of 90 degrees minus theta is always going to equal? And do we know what tangent of theta equals? Yeah, it's just tangent. And so it, it is using the new little identity that I gave you, but there's no work to do on that one. It's just knowing that cotangent of 90 minus theta equals tangent. So the answer is just 2 radical 6. Now that leaves number four. Number four is the hardest one. And they ask us to find sine. So anybody have a suggestion of something I could set up to find sine? Okay. <laughs> Doing... Oh, so you're saying like, oh, oh. Could I maybe take that one step further, and like you're saying you're doing x squared plus y squared equals r squared? So what are you using for r? Hmm. All right, let's, let's see if that works. It's really hard to put this around. Right, I'm confused. Well, I'm just confused. I don't think that that's going to equal the r squared. But what if I use one of the Pythagorean identities? Instead of x squared plus y squared equals r squared, what if I use cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1? I know I wrote sine plus cosine, but it's the same thing. I could do that, maybe, right? It's also a little crazy. This is how I've always done it. Anybody? What was someone else was going to say something? Anybody? I can do this, and we can work it out. Someone uh, last year and someone in second hour today, they suggested what if we use the ratio that tangent equals sine over cosine? Because do we know what tangent equals? Do we know what cosine equals? So we could fill that in, and then we just have to solve for sine. I think that's easier than my Pythagorean mess over here, but I think you have to use one of these two is, is the only ways I've done it. So I'm interested to see if you plug that in, if it works. I'll have to work it out later uh, to see if that works. So you tell me, what do you want to do? Do we want to square some stuff or we want to plug in over here? <laughs> How about I'll do both and you can pick which one you want to do. Uh, this one, tangent is 2 radical 6. I don't know sine, but from number one, we said that cosine was one-fifth. The trickier part about um, the squaring stuff is when you plug in one-fifth here, you got to square one-fifth because it's cosine squared. That's why I said I think this way is a better choice. But tricky, what would I do here? Um, would I? When we divide by fractions, people tend to make lots of mistakes here. But dividing by one fifth is the same as what? Yeah, so could I write this as 5 sine of theta? Is that the same as sine divided by one fifth? So just be careful because uh, in second hour, someone said. Let's just multiply both sides by 5, and that would solve the problem. But it wouldn't, because that's really a 5 up there already. So again, this is where I think this is a better choice. Because now all I have to do is divide by 5, and I get that sine equals 2 radical 6 over 5. Whereas over here, I still have some work to do. Like this would be 1 25th, and then i got to subtract that over. So I get 1 minus 1 25th is 24 over 25. And that's what sine squared equals. And I want to know what sine equals. So what else would I have to do on that problem? 
I'd have to take the square root of this, and that's where you'd get the same answer, because the square root of 25 is 5, and I could break that up as 2 square root of 6. Both ways work, but I think for number 4, you have to use either the Pythagorean identity or the tangent ratio that I just taught you today. So that's where it gets a little bit trickier. What else can we do with this? Kind of like the bonus on the no calculator part of the test, if you, uh, if you tried that. Let's look at a couple of these real quick. It says, find the value in degrees and radians from 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi. Up until now, we've only looked at one quadrant at a time, except for the bonus question on your no calculator part of your test. Like I said, tell me where secant equals 2 from 0 to pi half. Or, you know, like I gave you the specific quadrant. But what if they ask you to go all the way around the circle? How many answers are you always going to get? Always two, because every trig function is positive twice and negative twice. Tangent is positive in one and three and negative in two and four. Cosine is positive in one and four and negative in two and three. And so every one repeats itself. That's why the unit circle is so nice, because they repeat themselves. So it would be easier if I gave you cosine here, but we can change this. If secant of theta equals two, do you agree that's the same as saying cosine of theta equals one half? Where does cosine equal one half? Again, you gotta know your circle, you gotta know your triangles, you gotta be able to answer these questions. Cosine is x, and I think it's up there, right? That's um, one half square root three over two, which means what angle is that? Sixty degrees. And you got to give both because it says in degrees and radians. Is that the only place where cosine is equal to one half? What other quadrant is cosine equal to one half? Oh, sorry. What other quadrant is cosine positive? Which means this is where, even though I use the unit circle a lot, this is where you got to know those reference angles or you got to at least be aware. That however far away this is from the x-axis, there's another angle down here that's the same distance away. Which means I don't have to draw my whole unit circle to do this. And you shouldn't have to either. Because you should know if this is 60 degrees from here, then this is just 60 degrees back. Right? Um, or I'd be much better with radians. So this would be pi thirds back, which would be at 5 pi thirds. It would be 1 half negative. Right? So you don't want to have to, you shouldn't need the entire unit circle to answer these questions. That's where you kind of use a combination of reference angles, I think. So I can say that the other answer is at, um, what would that be, 300 degrees or 5 pi thirds. They have to tell you where to stop. Because do you agree we could just keep going around the circle and finding those same spots over and over again? What if I said find all the answers between 0 and 4 pi? How many answers would you get? Four answers, because you could just add 2 pi to each one of those ones. Right? So you have to think about that. You would just keep going. What about this one? If cotangent of theta equals 1, we could say tangent of theta equals 1. My favorite one. What angle has a tangent of 1? Tangent is what ratio? Y over X, which means if you're a unit circle person, the only way you can have a tangent or cotangent of 1 is if Y and X have the same numbers. Yes? So what angle is the only angle? 45 degrees, pi fourths. Yes? This stuff's not going away just because we had a test. We're still going to be talking about this stuff every single day. So if you thought you could just wing it through this test and then you'll be okay, it's not going to be okay. You have to know this stuff. So I could say that my answer is pi fourth or 45 degrees. What other quadrant is tangent going to be positive in? Which 
which would be one fourth more than pi, so that would be five pi fourths. And then I actually usually have to do the math for the degrees because I just don't know my degrees, but I think it's 225, 180 plus 45 is 225. How do you know whether to give your angle, your answer in degrees or radians? Whatever it says in the problem. If it says both of them, you give your answer in both of them. If what's after the problem is only in degrees, you only give your answer in degrees. I also have stuff I want to do with calculator, but uh, for some reason we're running out of time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the homework, and I'm going to tell you which ones not to do, and then we'll pick up uh, with this tomorrow. We can do almost all the homework, but I know you're upset. Okay, so those are just kind of things. 